Earth every day. What is climate change for you? Uh, climate change to me would be when the animals and the insects don't function like they were created to. Mm. And you have seen that. And I've seen it. He, he runs and owns a farm of five acres, yeah. and they live out of the land, just behind the Jackson the complex on, on Washington. And that's the Galloway Farms in, in there. What's going to change for you? Well, of course, climate, there's always climate change going on. What we're seeing is something accelerated. Uh, so, in the short, I mean, people live, you're supposed to say, short lifespans, 800 years, say. I mean, there's a plethora of centenarians around. And, but still, it's, it's, a, it's a change in climate more quickly than we've ever experienced. And we have experienced. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I'm, I worry about sea level rise and, uh, of course, California is like, what is it? I mean, you know, burning down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All this kind of thing, monsieur? <laughs> He's a geologist, by the way. <laughs> <laughs>
is as varied as your own minds, because everybody is seen a little bit of different things. It's a complex situation, but it's not just one body. Who wants to answer what is climate and what is weather? Any volunteer? What is climate and what is weather?
sell advertisement on the news. And that more or less what we see a lot, this repetition of things. Uh, it's not that they really care what is being formed, it's just that they have to talk about it. And now we have 24 hour news in a multiple channels, so they have really have to look for something to talk. There are no editors or anything. <laughs> they have to look for something to do. And if you pay attention, most of the people that get 11 and a half seconds or 22 and a half seconds to tell the news are under the age of 22. So there's no criteria there. They just want to have the pretty face in front of the television cameras and say something that hopefully they will be remembered for. But when you have so many of them, eh, who remembers them? So it's a, this misinformation, disinformation, whatever you want to call it, uh, there's not really that much being said of concern. And that's, of course, my view. But listen to the radio, look at television, they're talking faces. They're basically not mature people. They just want to be there in front of the cameras. And so they regurgitate and very responsible. They just throw these that they Yeah. 
picture there, planes are flying. We live in this little world field, tiny white area here. All these other different things. You can see the, the shuttle flying here at this level. We have you know, planes going up this way. But the balloons have got to go about this level. And then the planes fly within this level. But it's this little tiny, little tin little gas area there. Now, once we see a real photo, so this is dark sky, and this little tiny flight is about more or less 11 miles. That is our life. That's all.
There were alligators. There were lots of trees. There was a lot of things going down in the water. If that had not happened, there would be no oil. Oil is nothing more than leftovers, time, of all this organic matter. So it's hard to think that the largest <coughs> collection of oils right now are in the Arctic and are in the desert. So something happened there, right? Because there, there were jungles there. There was no, you cannot have oil without the jungles. And wet jungles like Louisiana. So planet, I mean planet, continents have moved, uh, you know, things like rock along the way at one time. The North Pole was more or less where Denver is today. So things change. It's a beautiful planet. But we need swamps to have oil. And all those millions of years of doing that is what us allowed us to have this burning fossil fuels in the industrial revolution that we began to learn to burn those things. That it took years and years and millions of years to do it. So that's what's happening now. We discovered that there are things below that were created in southern Louisiana climate many, many millions of years ago. And now they're in the Arctic and now they're in the desert. So it's a lot of moving, right, to be able to do that. You cannot have oil produced in the desert <coughs> or the Arctic. We have to have swamps, just like Louisiana swamps. And when we go to this thing of the sun and what we are, remember from this line green to this line here, the top of the atmosphere, we're talking 15, 20 miles. It's not really that much. But what happened is that the sun produces this infrared light, in, which is hot light. To keep your chicken warm, you have those spots with red light. Well, that's not red light. It's actually infrared. And that's why the chicken is hot. Because that light is really keeping the chicken warm. Because it's, it's, it's a high energy. It heats up. The light heats up. So that's what comes into here. So what happened is that this rays of uh, infrared can penetrate our thin atmosphere and come into planet and keep us warm in here. That's the job of the sun in terms of to do this. Well, some of this is absorbed, some of this is reflected, and then when you have this high radiation, you have high clouds, clouds are white, infrared is light, it bounces back and goes back into space. So more it happens. You have the other one where you go, some gets here, some goes up. And that's how we survive in this planet with this little dance of heat coming from the sun and allowing some of this to radiate back into space. And that was very stable. That being stable for the things. What is global warming? Your car. Your car is global warming. That's what happens in your car every day is what now is happening in our nearest planet. What happened is we have a large windshield this is my car, so my, my coffee friend says, don't know, it's a funny car. <laughs> so the sun goes through this glass, I mean the, the sunlight, which is infrared, goes through this glass. And the glass is clear, so the infrared light can penetrate glass, and it goes inside my car in here, because we have glass. Not through here, not through there, only through glass. So once this infrared light comes into my car, the job is to be reflected. The dark absorbs the heat, but the light reflects the heat and the light. So what happens is that once this infrared light hits inside the surfaces, bounces back, it has lost enough energy that it cannot traverse the glass again. So in your summer, you park the car in front of Walmart. You go to get a bandage. You come back and it's 120 degrees inside the car. Right? 
it can come through the glass inside the car, but it cannot go out. It cannot go out because this piece of crystal here is not just glass. It has two layers of glass. We have the layer of film in between for our security. And there is a different density of glass. It's tempered inside, so we don't get killed. And it's normal glass outside, so it cracks, and the insurance company make money out of the glass. You, know, you don't put tempered glass outside because nobody will buy another windshield. But inside, you protect it. It always cracks outside, not inside. So that is basically what this climate change is about. It's the easiest way to describe that when you are outside, even in August, it's hot, but it's just hot. Open the car, you get in, and it's really hot. Really hot. That is what this planet is doing. It's cool. So, what happened is that we used to have a thin line in that little white thing around the planet. They used to be thin, and used to be with a good balance of all these gases, but for 150 years we have been putting a whole bunch of new chemicals in that little thin area. We transform this 11 miles of our atmosphere into the windshield of our cars. Now the planet is doing exactly the same thing your car is doing. Because that
your fault. So if you take this white and you put it here, between 1979 and 2007, the eyes in here used to be where the yellow is. 1979. In 2007, this is the eyes you see now. The white. There's Canada. Thank 
returning dark. And dark attracts the heat. So the male, the eyes in this dog, melt faster. Because if this can reflect very little compared to that. So the more, the dirtier the air, the more fossil fuel, the more the baba trucks throw all this stuff at around there, more the darker the things get and the faster the melt. All these are just indicators. 1913, 2012. It's the same. If you look at the photo, this white went this way, and now this one here is brown all the way to here. That's a human in the foreground. Gone. You can see here where it used to be. This is the glacier. You can see the ridge of the mountain here, which is rich. This mountain here is this mountain here. This rope in here is this rope. And that is now that. That water is gone. That mirror is gone. So now we are showing more and more and more heat every day. Let's go. We got wood. Mahogany. Tropical woods. Tropical wood comes from somewhere. It doesn't come from Canada. It comes from the tropics. And the way, way to get those beautiful woods is this way. And to do this, we have to carve these roadways in the jungle to be able to get the precious wood out of here. And the trouble with this is not the truck with this hero. The trouble of this is that now this road goes someplace, and now people, because we have so many humans, and there's no place to live, before they could not go through the forest because it was difficult, now they can take a bicycle on an open road, establish a settlement, and burn their roads. So because one tree is one of those roads, to get that tree to this truck, somebody has to cut the path in here, Get the tree put in the truck and go away. Now there is a path for the humans to take over and start a new settlement. So this is just, it's like a spider web that opens its tentacle every time we cut a tree, something. And in this one, can be Brazil, New Guinea, Honduras, it's like this. And this used to be like that. Now this is Ghana, this is Morocco. That is the southern Sahara. They told the truth. They're hungry. They want to buy McDonald's. But they sell the trees. Then we have a high appetite for trees. There was the trees. And this was not like that. It used to be a green like that. And trees are evaporators, they have the shade, they filter, they turn carbon monoxide into oxygen. We don't have enough trees now to breed for all the humans we're doing. Let's go. Paul said there have been many, many times where this planet has heated up, but it took millions <coughs> of years. So we can read this through cores in the snow, cores in the ice, penetrations into the planet Earth, bottom of the ocean, it's a whole collection of waves. So here, this one is expressing millions of years from zero to 542 millions of years. And you can see in this case, methane. Methane, if you smell your trash, and you put it in a little bucket in your, underneath your kitchen counter, and it begins to smell very, very fast, and the fruit flies come first, and they die, and they become part of the whole cocktail. When that begins to putrefy, because the job is to get rotten, what it produces out, the byproduct of all that is methane. That is what comes, that pungent you know, smell that we see from, from our compost. It's methane. Well, the planet has a lot of methane because to have oil in the Arctic and Siberia, we needed swamps like Louisiana. So all that are all this green is down there, is decomposing, it has been layered, and when it decomposes, it turns into methane. And methane is a very volatile gas. We can push cars and trucks with methane. And it ignites very, very easily. And it's now stored underneath the ice and underneath the snow because it came late. The swamps were there, the planet rotated, the continents moved. So 
Luciana Swan got buried and it's still there. And then the planet cooled and it turned into the tundra of the Arctic. All that thing is still underneath there. So every so often, this methane fluctuates up and down, and you can see all these different peaks. When methane has been really high, it has been allowed to escape going up and for quite a distance. Now, the differences between this one and another one here is 150 million years. You know, that's 50 million years. This one and that one is 250 million years. But industrial revolution started in 1732. I think it was the first steamer. Just go down. And that's incredible. You know, 150 years, 200 years, now, when you have all those, all those things in here. So what's happening now is that I can go forever. There's so many things in global warming. But I decided to pinpoint on the Arctic because they indicate it. Not because what's changing is what the Arctic is telling us. The Arctic is probably the canary in the mine because so much is happening using the white shield, which is the main problem, using the white shield. All this heat now stays in the planet instead of going back. So what happened is that when the Arctic gets ice free, now the oceans are absorbing the light, right? There's no reflection, it's just absorption. Once this thing, because we have air moving, when this was cold and the southern was warm, the air moved in a certain way, now this is warmer than it used to be, now the air is going back. Warmer air, accelerating further the melting of that. So that has been going, you know, changing the pattern of the winds, and the ocean circulates up there, but in this case, underneath all this white is the, is the methane. So the methane again, which is called the permafrost, permafrost, some of you have lived in Chicago, is four feet deep. In the winter time, it's solid ice for first four feet. So as architects, we always design foundations below four feet in Chicago. In Canada, it's six feet because it turns solid ice because the planet is wet and then it gets frozen. So that's why we call the permafrost. So in this case, some place you know can be three hundred feet, some place hundred meters. And this is where the permafrost goes, but as it gets close to the continent, just like the beach, the ocean is very deep, but <coughs> to the beach comes, the land comes about. So at that place, then this permafrost has more heat because the water is shallower. So something begins to happen in there. Let's go. This methane, the Arctic Sea has a lot. Why? Because there's oil in there, remember? We're pumping oil from the northern tundra of the Soviet Union. We're putting oil out of Alaska. Why? Because that was Louisiana once upon a time. So all this organic stuff is still buried underneath this ice that the planet kept cold, preventing the gases to go up. But as we're melting that ice, that layer gets thin, and this methane now is being released. And that is a really bad gas, which makes our windshield in the car thicker. So less and less heat is escaping, so we have more and more methane up there. So that's where, concentrated in the Arctic, our big, big enemy is actually the methane. It's a very, very highly burning gas. And uh, so what happened is that now you see this out of the ice. If for any reason you see that's a hole in the ice, for any reason an ironing pole, the crazy cigarette, the fisherman, 
Greenland, Iceland, England, Norway, Finland, the Soviet Union. So now the ships are doing that and doing that. How many? Up to 2015, we have this amount of passengers going through it. By 2040 and 2050, there will be this amount of more by far the lines are getting thicker. And you can actually see that now. This is the Soviet Union. This is the Westerners. But by 2040, which is just around the corner, there will be so many I will be gone that the ship can do a straight line. They don't have to wander through the ice any longer. They will be able to go through. So try to think what happened with the commercial vessel doing this, and there's a ferry there. So not only the ice is appearing, but we're breaking it further. And you have beautiful cruise ship. Now you can look, do this in luxury, he says. It's only $12,000 to go through the Northwest in this guy. And if you book before a march, you can get two points. It's in the name. Mexico City is 
door and they were producing they already know I bet you those logs are not the same one as ours <laughs> now those logs are different already already are different. they evolved and they're doing fine that's what they're everywhere but uh, like Paul said So it was not supposed to be a very, very drastic and sad one. But as I said, if we don't do it, who's going to do it? Unfortunately, we are humans. And we never have written laws before the drama. We humans have to have drama before they have wisdom. There's always drama and then legislation of protection of concern. We have never done it before it happened. It's always have to suffer, then humans do the thing. And for the very first time, again, changing this new world, for the very first time, there's a whole bunch of people which are 14, 16 years old, that they are not going to school any longer because why bother? But they have courage to tell the President of the United States, you are ruining my planet. She is, I think she was Filipino, but anyway, when she came here. And they are blaming us. We are the old farts. We're the one that have the bother trucks. We're the one that have the thermostat. We're the one that wants to go to Europe in a jet plane at 500 miles up above, three times a year. Selfish, selfish, selfish. And of course, they're all my friends, but the rest, they don't care. They don't care. They don't care. But it's, it's a worry. It's a worry. The planet will survive. The planet has seen worse. Eh, it doesn't care. It's going to survive well. They're going to keep going. Things will move. Birds are now, instead of watching birds to say at a New York level or London level to see the birds, now you have to go to Scotland to see the same birds and you have to go to central Canada to see the same birds because the temperature air that they used to are is probably wrong. I just heard in, on the radio the beavers are back. And the beavers are back because they melt the ice as we see this so much that for them to have in the proper temperature, they are in paradise, a whole bunch of new trees that were never before because the ice can't be seen. So now the beavers are doing the work and they're leaving them alone because they are at least creating lakes, they create life. A whole different thing. They were shot for two centuries and now they're doing the job. So listen to the news the in between because they're not all of them. And it's things are only we did it. We changed it. And to finish, remember the Planet of the Apes? Charlton Heston, the first one, comes back to Earth, and then the apes are doing the whole thing. And the last scene, he's going and trying to get to the edge of the ocean, and he sees the Statue of Liberty <laughs> on his side, and he said, We did it! <laughs> I remember the <laughs> Got to that point, the poor lady was sitting down there. So that was, that was a good one to, to hear. But never, nevertheless, it's, I know it's conversational things, and if we do it at least a little bit of our part, uh, it's more for our own conscious. Because for one group like this in one panel, and the blah, blah, blah talk radios this today, I was listening to after Rush Limbaugh, but the same. Take the conversation this morning said, of course, we have to be political, right? But the bottom line said, I love how it feels. And I like my truck, I like my plane, and I love fossil fuels. If you have to escape an island because the hurricane is coming, are you going to use wind power cars? And the kick side said, there are no wind power cars. They all oh, doesn't make any difference. We need fuel. That's what we need. And this Arctic guy started listening to what he had to say. So it was kind of. But uh, that's why I decided to do.
No, it's the best indicator that so many different other things can address it. This is complex. But the argument is it's pretty fast. And it's going to change the current in the old days. The north current between Antarctica and, sorry, between Canada and Greenland, there was a cold current of water when the winter fell into the Atlantic. Now this rock of cold water is much weaker. So now the warm Atlantic is going to move to the back. Oh, I left that thing out. This is a report that gets to the path of the hurricane. It's going to be New York, Virginia, Boston. Because the warm has moved north. So now the new path of the big storm has been working again. But just before, the path is warm. So it's going to happen up there. So you're going to be changing. That's what creates the hurricane. The path is the warm oceans are going to get warm. So it's going to go up there. Anyway. You know, this is a, it's very informative. But it's very, it's almost like, you know, reality of, we don't really want to know the reality of things. Yeah. You know, it's just, because there is, we all know there is, you know, like you said, it's going to have to be, what, something dramatic and drastic for us to go, oh, okay. It will be. The only way to do it is just, as I mentioned, we have to have the drama. And then the resources possible. It's too much. Not the drama. It will be changed. React rather than take action. Yeah. The only one with Greta, what's the name of that girl? Greta. Thornton. Thornton. Thorntonburg, I think. Yeah. It's a whole new generation that they started. I'm not going to go to school. Why bother? Might as well be active in the United Nations. And she made it to the United Nations and we had a private session with Trump. A 14-year-old there. And she had the courage to say, you ruined my future world. You know, your generation. You want to mess up my generation. So it's a whole new, you know, mentality. I have grandchildren there. I call them funny, but if they read the laws, I don't see why they have to go to college and do things like those, right? Now, I'm sure you have a lot of grandchildren which are now 14, 15, 16, 13, and they are now following our path. You know, the, the, the scary part is it made a lot of sense about the storm was starting to go up. You know, New York can't have these cities up north that are just the square footage of an apartment is. Yeah. They can't. You know, it's to, to think of a storm so bad to hit a, a city, you know, it's yeah. just, it's, you know. Yeah, they already have their first two or three. What was the one, though, that. It, Sunday was the first Sunday, one. Yes. Yeah, but they have a couple of other ones. Course, and then it's the winter. Yeah. Um, and so at least here we deal with the bugs and the heat and the snow. But yeah. then you're freezing. Uh, oh, by the way, we discovered here, thanks to my friend uh, Nancy, you tell her that she's working a lot with uh, try to not have one-time use plastic, mm -hmm. and we discovered how to recycle and have plastic, but use it more than one time. And this is for why he did the first cup of coffee, of wine. My friend said, I'm going to give you another one. I'm using the same plastic twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he invited me to the other side of a cup of coffee. He said, ah, oh, we're using the plastic more than one time. <laughs> we can cook you. That will always be my favorite thing you want. Oh, yeah. wonderful. I like it. I'm still a reptile. And you are. Yes, I want it forever. I'm still a reptile, yeah. Okay, blah, 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 blah. My dear friend, close to the earth, what do you think about all this? Blah, blah, blah. Very dark. Encourages me more <clears throat> to do what we're doing on our farm to try to make sure it's sustainable. And, uh, we, we recycle. We, we have a saying on our farm: we recycle. Yeah, everything. Just recycle. Uh, <laughs> we we tell our farm. Cold, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we tell people on our farm that we recycle everything, kids included. 